happy to be here tonight to see your, your friendly faces. I'm going to talk about my dream. I've been dreaming about creeks lately. I'm going to talk about love. I'm going to talk about our local watersheds. And um, I'm going to talk about Atlanta Creek League. We've got a few friends here tonight wearing their t-shirts for Atlanta Creek League, which is a project that I came up with some friends to try to get people more engaged with their creeks and rivers. Um, so before I jump in, I want to do an experiment. I want everybody to close their eyes and think about your favorite place. And I'm talking about the place where you want to go to feel calm and connected and maybe let go of stress. I'm doing that right now because I'm nervous. I'm thinking about my favorite place. Now, while you've got your eyes closed, would anybody raise their hands if they're thinking about water? Thinking, you might be thinking about your grandma's kitchen. You might be thinking about your fluffy bed, but I see a lot of hands up. I see a lot of water lovers in the room. A lot of times when we want to feel calm and connected, you can open your eyes. <laughs> what we're thinking about is the beach, or a lake house, or a creek, or a waterfall. So I don't think I really have to tell you guys how to fall in love with the creek. I bet a lot of you are already, in some ways, very connected emotionally, culturally. Um, maybe even you're lucky enough to live near water, so you're probably already connected to water. I'm going to talk about why that's important, why I think it's important for us to nurture those connections uh, to create places that more people love and more people feel ownership of. Um, just like Jay Olu, I think it's important to start with a grounding. Um, wherever I go, I ask myself some basic questions about a place, and I do ask myself, where am I? And we are on the land, the ancestral homeland of the Muscogee Creek people. And I'm starting with that, but this is going to come back. This is going to keep coming back up as we talk about creeks. Literally, capital C creeks and lowercase um, creeks. So. I do want to start there. The second question I often ask myself when I'm speaking to an audience about where am I is what watershed am I in? So anywhere you are, you are in a watershed. Watershed means an area of land where water is draining to a creek or a river. So no matter where you are, you're in a watershed. And I wonder if y'all, anybody has any idea what watershed we're in. It's really tricky because in Atlanta, we're actually on the edge of a couple watersheds. We're right at the subcontinental divide. So this is, a, I love this, this is a 1952 map of Atlanta's river valleys. So you can see the Chattanooga River Valley, the Flint River Valley, the South River Valley, and Yellow River Valley. And I love a 1952 map because it's like before the big highways. So the landscape was still really defined by its creeks and rivers and by the railroads. And you can see that, um, you know, a lot of the cities are situated on the railroads, whereas our creek um, predecessors situated their cities along the creeks and rivers. So right now, we're right on the boundary of the South River Valley and the Chattahoochee River Valley. And I'm going to zoom in because right where we are, right downtown Atlanta, we are in a creek watershed. The creeks of downtown are very well hidden in pipes. They're underground, but they are there. And they are ancient, and they're, they're going to be there long after our city is dust. So the creeks that are, we are near, this is a, an engineering map that shows where the creeks are piped underneath downtown. And you can see that Proctor Creek is nearby. It's flowing to the Chattahoochee. And Entrenchment Creek is just south of us. It's flowing down to the South River into the Atlantic Ocean. Um, Clear Creek runs to the Chattahoochee. And that red dot where we are right now, we are very close. In fact, right in front of this building, there's a pipe that's carrying the headwaters of Tanyard Creek. Ever heard of Tanyard Creek? <laughs> a few of you, I see a few nods, but I mean, blank stairs are okay too. There's a lot. There's a reason why you haven't. You're not familiar with Tanyard Creek. It is very well buried in downtown Atlanta. Um, but I think that's a shame. I think we should all kind of know more about the creek shed and watershed we're in. So we're working with some friends, including designer Sarah Lawrence, who's here tonight. We started branding these creeks. I've worked in marketing communications. I know the power of a good brand. I, know, I thought people will be um, you know, interested to know what their creek is. They probably have seen it, but don't know what it is. So we came up with some uh, 
maps and logos, and we branded uh, 20 of Atlanta's founding central creeks, including Tanyard Creek. And uh, this is a map of the Tanyard Creek watershed. We are right down here, and the creek is completely invisible in Atlanta. I mean, the first time you see it is north of the, the 7585 split. That's where you can actually go to a park and see Tanyard Creek flowing north. So it's a typical urban stream. It's got a lot of issues. Um, but I, you know, I, I grew up, this is a photo from where I'm from. I'm from the Jester Creek watershed, which is in Forest Park, Georgia. Um, I grew up not knowing what that creek was called. It was a creek we played in, a creek we all knew about, but I didn't know what it was called. Um, and I lived near strip malls like this, Flint River Village, where there is neither a village nor a river. Like, I had no idea that there was a river nearby. There's no access to it. And the reason why is that river was pretty, poor, pretty badly degraded by urban runoff and pollution. So I've been working for the past six years now on a project called Finding the Flint. And I've been working with a lot of uh, south side stakeholders to try to restore the river. Um, part of what we've done is literally put up signs that say Flint River <laughs> when there were no signs for generations. Um, when a river doesn't even have a name, um, we lose touch with it, we lose sight of it, it becomes sort of out of sight, out of mind. And so it's been a powerful act to call that a river again, and not just a ditch or a drainage, but actually call it a river, put up a sign, and treat it with the respect um, of rivers like the Chattahoochee River. The same movement is happening on the South River as well. It's a really exciting time to be in Atlanta. So, you know, we put up some signs that say things like, you know, headwaters of the Flint River in East Point. This is a, it looks like a ditch. People would, you know, not know or respect this as an important regional resource. You know, we all depend on this water for drinking water. Let's treat it like it's important all the way to the source. So in the process of putting up signs and trying to get this river back on the map, uh, one example of putting the river back on the map, just last fall, the airport spilled, the airport, some airline um, at the Hartsville Jackson Airport spilled, uh, several thousand gallons of jet fuel into the Flint River. Uh, the Flint River is flowing into the airport. So the EPD, you know, assigned some fines to the airport for that. And part of the fines, you know, that's important. Fines are important. But more important to me is that they force the airport to update their maps to show that that is the Flint River and it's not just a pipe under the airport. It's actually a river that we all depend on. So in my work with Finding the Flint, I've been really lucky to partner with lots of other river restoration, environmental organizations across Atlanta, and to learn from residents who live in Proctor Creek Watershed and Trenchman Creek Watershed. And when you spend time with folks who live in all of these different watersheds in, urban, in the highly urbanized areas of Atlanta, you start to hear similar stories and themes start to emerge. Um, the theme that I hear, you know, I live, I'm working on the Flint River watershed down here. The Flint is really impacted by the Atlanta airport, this giant piece of transportation infrastructure parked on the headwaters of the river. Well, the, the stories that we hear in Clayton County of flooding and pollution sound very similar to the same issues that residents are facing in People's Town. And because Turner Field was built on the headwaters and downtown Atlanta is on the headwaters of Entrenchment Creek. It's also very similar to the folks who live in Vine City and English Avenue uh, because the Georgia World Congress Center and Mercedes-Benz in downtown are built on the headwaters of those creeks. So we see that as we put these creeks underground, they don't stay there. You know, when it rains, they reveal themselves. There's flooding, there's issues of, you know, sewage spilling out into the streets. And when you start to hear these things all over, you know, Atlanta in all these different ways, I've started to think of these like creeks that we've tried to, you know, contain under our cities. They become anonymous, like I said, out of sight, out of mind. They become dirty secrets. And there's different ways we talk about water. Um, you know, you might hear water just referred to as wastewater, or discharge, you know, nuisance flooding. You know, there, there's ways that we talk about water when it becomes a problem, when it becomes a nuisance in our backyard. So I'm, as, a, as I'm naming these, you know, ditches, I'm calling them rivers and creeks again. I'm trying to reclaim some of the benefits for communities. So that leads me to my dream, this funny idea that I came up with with some friends. Um, and we're calling it Atlanta Creek League. So I'm not that into sports, um, but people seem to really love uh, you know, sports and competition between different teams. 
So I thought, what would it be like if we created a league and we started trying started trying to like gamify the way that we interact with our creeks and rivers. So Sarah came up with all these awesome logos. We have three divisions right now, the Flint River Division, South River, and Chattahoochee. And we're going to have to add a Yellow River Division because people keep coming on the website nominating Yellow River Creeks. So currently, we've done, like I said, the first 20 creeks. Um, you can go to the website, atlantacreeklink.com. You can put in your address, and it'll tell you what your local watershed is. Oh, that's the other thing. Every time I talk about river issues, people always come up to me afterwards and say, I want to get involved. I, I want to help protect my creek. I see dumping. I see, you know, weird smells and trash. And how can I help? And I say, well, what is your creek? And most people don't know. Um, so we have to start there. We have to start by like knowing what our neighborhood creek is and caring for it. Um, so my neighborhood creek is actually Utoy Creek. I live on um, in East Point on the west side of the tracks. So with my neighbors, we have come up with a Team U Toy Creek, and we've had a couple cleanup events uh, where we go down to Cascade Springs and we clean up the creek and we wear t-shirts. It's really silly and fun. Um, it's just a way to like make creek stewardship into a game that more people feel like they can enter into. Um, you can go on the website and you can enter your activities for points, because we are actually building a competition between the different creeks. You can earn points by doing a cleanup, you can earn points by reporting dumping, you can earn points for, you know, taking a nap by your creek. <laughs> or you can, you know, whatever you do to enjoy or be a steward of your creek, um, you can earn points for it. So this is really interesting to me to think about all of Atlanta's watersheds, and it's just an interesting way to slice up the city. Um, my colleague Daryl Haddock says everything happens in a watershed, and he's talking about things like, um, Housing insecurity, local food, um, any any issue, crime, um, any issue that you're dealing with, it is happening within a watershed. And I'm trying to build community along watersheds. So Shoal Creek is an interesting example. A lot of these are like this, where up here in Decatur we have you know really wealthy residents in Decatur. Do they realize that they're on the same team as the folks in South Decatur, um, in Panthersville, or Gresham Park? Like, do they? Do people start to understand that like you're all on the same team because you're all part of the same watershed and you're all connected by the water? So I'm going to tell you a few reasons you should fall in love with your local creek. And I, if you're not already, I'd love to get you involved in some creek stewardship activities. For one thing, uh, creeks are intimate. When you, when you think about saving the planet and, and reversing climate change, when you think about the big issues, it's, it's overwhelming and you can get burnt out, and you can say, it's too confusing, it's overwhelming, I'm out. But your local creek is this fairly small scale entryway into, care, into acts of restoration that really matter for our planet and really matter, I think, for my soul. I mean, every time I do a creek cleanup, I just feel like I'm part of an act of restoration, and it's, it's very reassuring to me. It's a great way to know my neighbors. So it's something about the scale of a creek. It feels really personal. It feels like you own it although it belongs to all of us. Um, I, one thing I love about creeks is the way that they restrict sprawl. In most places, you can't, it's, it's expensive and difficult to build right on top of water. There are examples, I mean, uh, exceptions, like the airport, but this is in um, Stockade Creek in East Atlanta where the creek itself sort of creates a great space buffer between communities, and this is a wonderful community garden that exists because of the creek. So Atlanta doesn't have many restrictions on sprawl. We sprawl in every direction for miles, but the creeks start to you know, provide some structure to a really sprawling landscape. Um, this is an entrenchment creek, which has become a real battle, a literal battleground in Atlanta. And I love to think that entrenchment creek, no matter what gets built on it or near it, is, is going to outlast us. Um, the plans for this property have shifted from being a green space to a police training facility. Um, but Entrenchment Creek is, is the connection between all these communities and our stewardship of that creek is going to save us, I think. And last of all, creeks take up their own space. Creeks flood. Creeks move. Their paths change over time. Um, we can't build right up into the buffer zones of creeks. They're going to take that land back. They're going to keep moving. So. This is Jester's Creek, back to my hometown creek, and that's my kid on Jester's Creek Trail in Clayton County. 
And I just love that this, the, the space that creeks take up can and should be public space. It should be accessible to all. And there's many examples of awesome creek trails in every corner of Atlanta now. And I'd like to see those multiply um, because it, it brings creeks, uh, people closer to creeks. So the opposite of an anonymous creek is a beloved creek. And this, I'm getting to the last of my slides. Um, you can see that when a creek is accessible, when it's clean, when it's well stewarded, people feel a sense of ownership, not just because it's a place to go fishing, but you know, it's a place to worship, it's a place to play, it's a place to have um, connection to your ancestors. I mean, everything that I'm listing here as, as beloved creeks is something that I feel about this creek, which my cousin Ben knows about. Um, this is a creek in North Carolina that's on uh, land that has been in my family for generations. Um, and I think of this creek as the place where I turned into a little environmentalist. And um, I think of this creek as, as really the key to the privilege um, that I possess. Like that, that this creek has been accessible to me my entire life and now to my children is like a tremendous privilege. I want everybody to have access to the privilege that I had with this creek. The ability to wade in it. I'm talking in Atlanta, I would love for children to swim and wade and eat from the creeks. Imagine how that would change our connection to our neighborhoods. Uh, imagine fighting for that. When you love a place like that, you will fight for it, and you'll fight for a better future for your neighborhood if you actually have that connection to the creek. So this is a really special place to me. And does this, when I, when I talk about a creek being an ancestral connection, or free energy, or an ecology classroom, or a sanctuary, I, I, I didn't make all this up. I thought I was really bright when I came up with, like, let's say, the creeks. But this, this is sounding more and more, the more I read, like indigenous land management. And if we look at the ways that the, the creek people or indigenous cultures all over the world who live closer to their natural ecosystems, who live at the rhythms of nature, who live in more sustainable um, scale developments, it sounds a lot like our indigenous ancestors. And so I don't think, you know, we can solve climate change, you know, all by ourselves. It's going to take whole communities. And I feel like we have to reassess our relationship with nature. And Creeks is just a really accessible, approachable, delightful, <laughs> and fun way to enter into the work that we all need to do to create a city that we all can pass down to our grandchildren and that they too will want to fight for. That's the end of my talk. Thank you very much.